Hi, today we're going to be going over adhesives. Adhesives are used in everything from the cell phone in your pocket to the appliances that are located behind me. And when used correctly, adhesives blend into the environment to the point where you don't even notice them. The next time you fill your kitchen sink up with water, take a moment and think about it. The entire weight of all of that water is being held up with nothing but glue. So today we're going to be focusing on adhesives, but for 3D printing and maker kind of applications. In front of me, I have a wide range of glues that I would use for different things. But the question is, what glue out of these is best for your 3D printed parts? We're going to be focusing mostly on PLA today, but in the future, I plan on covering PETG and other 3D printed filament types such as nylon or TPU uh, to see what glue works best for that application. If there's a specific filament that you want to see tested, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make sure to buy some to test it out. Before we get started though, let's go over the glues that I have here and what I would personally use them for before we do any testing. Uh, super glue, pretty basic, two-part epoxy, hot glue. Uh, Project Farm did a great video where he covered multiple different kinds of hot glue and this one won, so that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, wood glue, you know, what if you only have wood glue? Would it still work holding together 3D printed parts? We got some more specialty things. Uh, this is a solvent adhesive. It's meant for acrylics, but hey, maybe it'll work on 3D prints. We're going to find out. Over here, I have a PL glue. This is a construction adhesive that's really strong. Uh, the nice thing about it is it expands, so it fills up gaps. And I also have E6000, which stays a little soft and flexible when it dries. Lastly, I have three different kinds of VHB tape. A lot of people on YouTube think that VHB tape is just VHB tape, but it's not. 3A makes a wide variety of VHB tape that is designed for different applications depending on the surface energy of the material you're sticking it to. If you want to learn more about surface energy, go down to the description or click the thing that's on the screen. I have an entire video about surface energy and why it matters for adhesives. So with that being said, let's go apply this glue over on the workbench and get to testing. All 3D printed parts were first sanded with 80 grit sandpaper to remove any layer lines and to provide an ideal surface for the glue to adhere to. For more viscous adhesives that would squeeze out, tape was first applied around the joint area and then cut with a knife. The glue was applied and left to dry. After, the tape along with any squeeze out was removed before testing occurred. All parts were clamped and given one week of dry time before testing was performed. Alright, to kick off the torque test we have the Loctite PL adhesive. This clocked in at 9.2 foot-pounds and the failure point was across the actual adhesive, so the adhesive failed, it stayed on both sides of the plastic. Next up we got Weld on 3, despite JB Weld being crossed off on the part. Uh, this, is he this adhesive was amazing. It managed to crank out 25.5 foot-pounds, and it was actually the plastic that yielded and not the adhesive. Uh, I moved the camera angle for this one. I uh, thought it would get a better visibility, but uh, really didn't. Uh, that was CA glue with 13.1 foot-pounds. And then right after that, I did wood glue. And uh, yeah, it, wood glue is not what you want to use at all. Uh, zero foot-pounds. Next up, we have... Uh, I believe this is hot glue and hot glue did a pretty amazing job uh, better than what I expected at 11.2 foot pounds and you can see it clearly held on to both sides of the plastic which is really good to see for an adhesive uh, I think that has to do with it melting the plastic just slightly uh, and then after we have JB Weld and JB Weld managed uh, 12 foot pounds on the dot Pretty amazing that hot glue is only 0.8 foot-pounds less than JB Weld. Uh, and you can see that it did stay on both sides of the plastic. Um, I had to go hunt for the other one. Uh, it did stay on both sides, but predominantly stayed on one. But it did actually break the JB Weld uh, epoxy. Uh, after that, we have the three VHB tapes. Um, these are pretty uneventful. Uh, they all get zero foot-pounds, but it is interesting how they, uh, how they fail. So first up, VHB5952, the black one. Uh, you can see that it actually split across, uh, whereas the next one, the 4941, uh, the adhesive didn't split. It actually separated off of the plastic piece. And then finally, the LSC160, uh, which is meant for plastics, uh, it also split uh, across the adhesive, uh, similar to the 5952, the first one we tested. It's a bit hard to see because it's white tape on white plastic, but still zero foot pounds. Okay, real quick, I'm going to go over the testing setup. Uh, sadly, the microphone in the background, the audio didn't get captured very well, so I'm going to have to do a lot of this in post. 
Uh, but here we have the vise that's going to be holding the parts uh, for both the torque and shear strength. That's hooked up to a hang scale uh, that has a max hold feature. So it's going to hold on to the maximum weight that is applied to break these parts. Uh, to apply that force, I have a ratchet strap, and in the background, or in the back, I have this triangle that I made that's clamped to the workbench. Uh, it's two pieces of metal that are meant to support a bed frame, and they're just bolted together. Uh, that microphone there, sadly, it picked up a lot of radio interference from a nearby radio station, so the audio is questionably usable. Okay, up first we have Loctite PL. Twenty eight point six pounds of force. All right, uh, this one is the Weld on three. This one gets a little sketchy, so I'm just going to fast forward through it and do a voiceover. It gets up to around one hundred and twenty pounds, and yeah, I could tell that if it went, that clamp was just going to go flying right at me. So I covered it with a sheet and just kept cranking on it. Uh, ultimately, it got up to a little over three hundred pounds, but uh, it actually broke my ratchet strap. So my ratchet strap wouldn't go any further. Uh, so. I just called it quits at 300 pounds and let's move on. All right, like I mentioned, uh, the background microphone had a lot of radio interference. So I'm going to just narrate over this and just try to cut in the, the sounds of the ratchet strap and it, and it breaking just so you can hear kind of what it sounded like. Uh, first up, we have wood glue. I had to swap my uh, ratchet strap out after that last test because the weld on broke the ratchet strap. Uh, but wood glue, much easier, uh, managed to only last up to 26.6 uh, pounds. Yep, 26.6. So next up we have CA glue or super glue. 26. Managed to do a bit better than the wood glue at 47.4 pounds. Next up we have 6,000. E6000 uh, did a little bit better than the super glue. It managed uh, 49.8 pounds. All right, next up we have hot glue, which is quickly becoming uh, my fan favorite. Uh, I was not expecting hot glue to manage as well as it did, but here we are. Uh, so it gets up to 146.2. Um, and uh, I kind of had to adjust to, to get more leverage on the ratchet strap. Uh, so kind of take my hand off. Uh, I was trying to make sure that the scale didn't fall because it's pretty loud when it falls and I'm in an apartment. Um, but I start cranking on it uh, again shortly after uh, and that's all it takes. Uh, just a small little push and it breaks. But 146.2, pretty respectable. Uh, next up, JB Weld. JB Weld did a pretty good job uh, at 105 pounds. Uh, now, this means that hot glue was better than JB Weld by 40 pounds. And I had to go find the pieces just to make sure, but yep, the JB Weld is actually what failed. It hung on to both sides of the plastic uh, and the JB Weld is what split. All right, next up we have the VHB tapes. First one is VHB 5952. It managed 22.2 uh, .2 pounds and the adhesive actually failed. So it detached from one side of the plastic as you can see. But we have two more VHB tapes to test. Uh, the next one up is VHB 4941, which is the gray one. That one did much better at 84.4 pounds. I definitely should have been trying to hold the, uh, the uh, scale there. Uh, but this one also uh, was an adhesive failure. So you'll notice that there's two pieces, but that's just because the tape wasn't wide enough. So I had to cut a little bit of extra on there. Uh, but 84.4 pounds, pretty respectable for some uh, for some double-sided tape. And last up, we have the VHB LS160. Oh, no. Yeah, and this one is meant for plastics, but uh, the uh, carrier, the, the foamy bit in the middle, just wasn't strong enough. Uh, you can see that the adhesive stayed on both sides of the plastic, uh, but that foam in the middle just ripped at uh, 28.6 pounds. So better than the 5952, but nowhere as good as the 4941. Yeah, this project has just been uh, plagued with issues between camera problems, and microphone problems. 
the camera battery that I was using died, even though it said it was like 80%. Um, so I guess I just have a bad battery. So the first three uh, tests for PL, Weld On, and Wood Glue uh, all didn't get recorded. So PL uh, for sheer strength had 43 pounds. Uh, Weld On, this is one I'm holding right now in the footage. Uh, it managed to get up to 104 pounds. I tested it four separate times and it would just rotate out of the vise uh, after the plastic snapped. Um, and then wood glue only lasted uh, seven pounds, so not super good for wood glue. Um, but let's jump back into it. Uh, in the vise right now, I have CA glue, uh, so super glue. Uh, so we're gonna start cranking down on that and see how that does. So 92.8 pounds and then the plastic snapped. So let's chuck it back in and see if we can get any higher. And that's about all that super glue will give us, uh, 165.6. Uh, it started rotating in the vise, that's the same thing that the uh, weld on did. Next up, we have E6000, and it gave way at 23.8, not super impressive. After that, though, we have hot glue, which is quickly becoming my favorite. Yeah, so as you could hear on the other mic, uh, 71.2, uh, and then I rechucked it in the vise, and what I think happened here is me clamping it in the vise caused the bottom piece of plastic to deform a little and become uh, concave, convex. Uh, it caused it to dome up on top. Uh, so then when I went to grab it, and it just pulled off at you know, very little pounds of uh, force. So keeping it at 71.2 or whatever I said prior. Moving on to JB Weld, we get 81.4 pounds. Uh, same thing happened with the plastic breaking uh, and then me chucking it in the vise and the vise causing the plastic to deform. So 81.4 is what we're going with. Moving on to VHB, first up we have 5952. You'll see it around 10 pounds, it starts to give, uh, but then it holds on until 35.4. And then at 35.4, it just stretches and eventually detaches. Uh, you can see, though, that it was the carrier that failed and not the adhesive. So the foam uh, in the middle is what ripped. Moving on to 4941. It holds on a bit longer before it starts to stretch. I'd say around a little shy of 20 pounds uh, and this is when it starts to stretch. But then it gave up at 37.4. And you can see that this was an adhesive failure, not a carrier failure. So the adhesive detached from one side. Moving on to VHB LSE 160. It's shifting at seven pounds. Yeah, it's, it's starting to give at seven pounds, the lowest out of all of them. Uh, and then the adhesive actually holds on until 30.2. Uh, but you, you could tell that, you know, if you held it at a lower weight, it would have gave. Uh, and th this was also um, an adhesive failure. All right, let's talk results. So first off on torque, weld on three takes a cake. And to be honest, it doesn't everything. Tensile strength off the charts, shear strength, both CA glue and weld on tipped in the vise. So that's skewing the measurements here a little. I'm pretty sure if we brought it up to the point where it actually failed, uh, weld on three would have also won. So let's talk weld on three real quick. This stuff is amazing. If you need a joint uh, that is as strong as the plastic itself, this will do it. That being said, the main component in it is dichloromethane, which is a known carcinogen that can cause birth defects and all sorts of nasty stuff. So if you're using it, you need adequate ventilation, you need a fan to blow those fumes away from you, uh, preferably a ventilator with an organic chemical uh, cartridge on it, uh, and you also need to wear gloves. And the gloves won't actually stop it from getting on your hands because it's a plastic solvent. The gloves are just there, so if it gets on the gloves, you can take them off real quick. Uh, and go wash your hands to kind of limit the, uh, that exposure. So it's great if you need it, but I would not say that it is a uh, everyday kind of glue. You know, it's only for that, that rare instance where you really need the plastic to be as strong as possible. So ignoring that for the rest of the results, let's look at what we got. So for torque, 
Uh, CA glue is the winner. If you have a surface that is nice and flush where CA glue will bond really well to both of the pieces, I would say go for that. If you don't and you need a thicker glue to, to fill a gap, uh, hot glue seems to be the winner here. Technically, JB Weld has a little bit of a stronger strength, but I don't think it's strong enough that the inconvenience of mixing the two-part epoxy is worth it. Moving on to tensile strength, hot glue again did an amazing job. Uh, if you can deal with a little bit of uh, glue, like increasing the size of your, of your part, or a little bit of squeeze out, uh, hot glue is the winner. If you need a thin glue, uh, CA glue is probably your best bet there. For shear strength, again, CA glue did an amazing job. Uh, if you need a thin glue, I would say CA glue is the winner. If you need something that uh, can fill a bit more of a gap, JB Weld is the winner here. Uh, it's a little bit stronger than hot glue, but there's also a unique property with uh, shear joints. So if you have a shear joint that wants to split apart like this, right, and you can model and control both sides, you can put a through hole through both of the pieces. And then uh, when you go to glob in your JB Weld, it will fill up both of, the, both of those holes. So it'll basically make a pin of solid epoxy that's through both of the pieces. So when it wants to shear apart, it'll have to shear through that epoxy. Uh, that will give you an even stronger joint than anything that we tested here. So uh, JB Weld is great for a shear load. Talking about the double-sided tape, it looks like uh, VHB4941 is the winner. So here it's very closely uh, the winner, but if we look at the tensile strength, it is definitely the strongest out of all of them. And I really like to see that because if we look at the tests, uh, 5952 broke on the foam carrier and not on the adhesive. Now what that means is when you go to remove the adhesive from the floor, the wall, the desk, whatever you've stuck it to, 5952 will tear across that foam and it will leave adhesive residue on what it's stuck to. Whereas with 4941, because it failed on the adhesive and not on the carrier, that means it'll come off cleanly. It's still annoying to get off of whatever it's stuck to, don't get me wrong, but it'll come off cleaner than 5952. So this is the VHB that I would recommend. The gray tape with the white backing paper. Um, most, most listings on Amazon and stuff do list the uh, 4941 as well. So just look for that. With that being said, hopefully you guys found this video useful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys use your adhesives for, uh, or if this video taught you to use a different adhesive than what you normally were using. Uh, again, if there's a filament you want to see, let me know as well. Uh, I'll try to buy some of it and print those out. I'll also fix the orientation on the shear strength part uh, so that we don't have the plastic failing. I'll put those models on printables and throw the link in the comments below so you guys can test your own stuff too. Maybe we can get a bunch of YouTube makers to all collaborate and we can have, you know, a big data source of all of the different adhesives and glues and stuff. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you like this video. Uh, hopefully on the next one, I'll have less camera and microphone issues. Uh, I'm really trying to get uh, better with, with how these videos are made, but you know, it's a process. Uh, not every video is going to be perfect, but Hopefully you liked it and uh, hopefully you liked it enough that uh, you'll stick around and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.